Zyzel. In this USG how-to video, we'll discuss implementing the new single sign-in feature to enforce security policies as soon as local users log into their domain-based computers. With previous USG appliances, seamless local network domain integration wasn't available, and users were required to sign in through a captive portal redirect in order to gain access to restricted domain assets, in addition to the normal local network domain login on their host computers. This created extra steps that were cumbersome and somewhat confusing to users. In the latest USG appliances, the USG supports single sign-on, a feature that grants access to users for restricted domain assets using the normal domain login a user enters when he or she turns on or logs into a domain computer. The user signs in once and does not have to log into any captive portals to get access to the domain's local servers, email, and so forth. To configure this feature, you'll need a Windows Domain Controller and Active Directory Authentication Database. You'll also need to ensure that the USG is configured to work with your AD server. For more information on setting up your USG to work with Active Directory, see our other USG how-to video using the USG with an Active Directory database. You'll also need to install the single sign-on agent or SSO agent onto a host machine. The agent is a go-between for the USG and domain controller whenever a new user signs in. You can download the software at www.zizel.com forward slash SSO or by navigating to any next gen USG product page at www.zizel.com and clicking on the SSO agent link in the related products section. The SSO agent will interoperate with the following Active Directory server types. Windows Server 2008 Enterprise, 32 and 64-bit, Windows 2008 Release 2, 64-bit, and Windows Server 2012, 64-bit. Once you have the software, install it on a host machine. This host machine could even be the domain controller itself. The software will run on the following platforms, Windows 7 Professional, 32 and 64-bit, Windows Server 2008 Enterprise, 32 and 64-bit, Windows 2008 Release 2, 64-bit, and Windows Server 2012, 64-bit. Each SSO agent can support up to two USG appliances and two domain controllers. However, SSO agent cannot support multiple user logins on the same host computer, such as for Windows Terminal Services, multiple clients behind another NAT, or multiple Active Directory domains. In other words, you'll need to set up an SSO agent for each domain. Be sure to check out the release notes that you download with the SSO agent for more details. After you unzip the downloaded software, you'll see the release notes and the SSO agent folder. In this folder, you'll see the SSO agent installer as well as subfolders containing patches that you'll need to install prior to installing the SSO agent. Install these patches and then run the SSO agent installer. If the patches indicate that you have the same or higher version of the patch software already on your computer due to Windows updates, for example, then your computer should not require the patch. Some patches may also not apply to your particular operating system version. Once everything is patched, run the SSO agent installer and follow the setup wizard to complete the installation. Remember that you can install the agent on either the domain controller directly or a workstation, so be sure to select the correct option. Near the end of the installation, you'll be asked to input the user account to install the SSO agent service. This should be a domain admin account, preferably the same account we'll use for the bind DN in later steps. You can use the check name button to ensure the syntax is correct. After installation, you'll be asked to enter the NetBIOS domain name of your computer. If you're not sure how to find this, Use the Guide to Get NetBIOS Name link in the pop-up window. It's typically the same as the standard domain name. Once you've installed the software on the host machine, you should see its icon in the system tray. Right-click on the icon and select Configure Zyzel SSO Agent. The default agent listen port is 2158, but whatever you decide to use, make note of it for use on the USG's configuration in the following steps. Click on the Configure LDAP AD Server button. Give the configuration a name and a description, but you'll need to specify the server address, port, and base DN, 
which should be identical to the base DN setup on the AD server. Under server authentication, you'll need to enter the bind DN username and password. This account allows the USG and SSO agent to join the domain with administrative privileges. It's a required field and must also be configured on the AD server for the USG and SSO agent to properly interoperate with the AD server. At the bottom of the menu is the configuration validation tool. If you have a username you can test against the AD server, you can enter it here and click the test button to ensure the SSO agent is properly interoperating with the AD server. Once your settings are correct, click OK to save them. Back on the main configuration screen, under Gateway Settings, click Add to add the USG's LAN IP address as the gateway address. The gateway port should be the same as the agent listen port. Add a description and create a pre-shared key manually or by using the generate key button. Copy the PSK onto your clipboard and click OK to save the new gateway settings. Click OK in the main configuration window to close it and save your settings. Finally, back on your Windows taskbar, right click on the Zizel SSO agent icon and select enable Zizel SSO agent. Next. Log into the USG. Connect to the USG's LAN port and point your web browser to its management IP address. The default IP address for the USG is 192.168.1.1. If using the default self-signed certificate on your USG, your browser may present you with a security warning, but it's perfectly okay to proceed. Default username is admin, and the default password is 1234. If you're still using the default password, you'll be prompted to change it and we'll have to log back in using the new password. Once you've logged in, you should see the dashboard and the menu bar on the left margin. From the menu bar, go to the Configuration Web Authentication menu and check the Enable Web Authentication box. Click Apply to save these settings. This sounds counterintuitive to single sign-on, but we'll make this feature work transparently by creating an SSO web authentication policy next. To do that, click on the Add button in the Web Authentication Policy Summary section. Add an optional description. For source address, select the LAN1 subnet, or, if you prefer, whatever address or range you want to authenticate through SSO. Leave the destination address set to any, and the authentication set to required. Ensure the single sign-on box is checked, but uncheck the force user authentication box. Click OK to save your new policy. Next, click on the SSO tab near the top of the window. Ensure the listen port matches what you set up on the SSO agent and paste the agent pre-shared key into the corresponding field. The primary agent address and primary agent port should match the IP and port being used by the SSO agent host. You may also add a secondary SSO agent for redundancy. When finished, click Apply to save these settings. In order to ensure that user traffic is passed correctly, you'll need to create a new security policy on your USG. Do this by going to the Configuration, Security Policy, Policy Control Menu, and then clicking the Add button. Enable the rule and give it a name. Set the source as the subnet being used by the SSO Web Authentication Policy, such as LAN WUD subnet, the destination as any, the service as SSO, and the action to allow. Click OK to save the new policy. One final step you'll need to take is to allow ICMP traffic from the SSO agent to be received by computers on the domain so they can return a ping response. This allows the SSO agent to help the USG determine whether a host is still on the network when the idle timeout value is reached. Although you can make this Windows firewall exception on every individual machine, you'll most likely want to push this security policy from your AD server. For steps on how to do this, you can reference the SSO agent application notes that were included in the SSO agent zip folder you downloaded from zizel.com. With these settings in place, users should be able to authenticate against the USG security policies when they initially log into their computers on the local network domain and require no additional login. For more USG how-to videos, see our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash